we actually have a really dope conversation that we want to highlight from the Bremen network space where Lucky Daddy, <laughs> I hope I'm saying that right. Is it, is it Lucky Didi or Lucky Daddy? I'm I'm going Didi. All right, Lucky Didi, you got to let us know how we say this, man. Um, but are videos not effective anymore? All right, that's the question. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of commentary in this space. And many I agree, but let's let's get, get into this breakdown. As of lately, I've noticed my shorts on YouTube have gotten far more organic engagement than any of my actual visuals that I've spent money to shoot. I've been able to gain more subscribers from my shorts than actual videos as well. Based on this experience and what I've heard from different sources, it seems as if it's better to post content for your music than to shoot actual videos for some until you have an audience that is truly engaged in your visuals, it's more cost efficient for me in this case. Plus, attention span is so short now. What are you guys' thoughts? I mean, I think touched on some very quality points right there. Yeah. All right. So let, let's just start there before we get into some of these thoughts. Right. The biggest thing that I always speak to people about when it comes to this is the cost effectiveness. Yeah, the cost, bro. All right. What's the number one thing? When we're talking to artists that they typically complain about money, 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 bro. Yeah. So why would you do something that's going to cost you money? Like you, you have to think about it is I have this machine. All right. And it's not the best machine. So I have to make proper decisions. Right. You know, I'm, I can build a car around it, but I'm not going to be able to, you know, go off road with this thing. I need the road to be smooth. So I need to manage this as much as possible. What am I going to do? Am I going to spend money to get, let's say, I need to drive from Atlanta, New York with this car, right? It's going to take more gas to go off road in all these winding directions. And then do I have enough money to fill the gas tank up <laughs> enough times? Probably not, not right? It's, 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 I, just, I got just enough. So in this life, when it comes to your resources, especially when you have very, very minimal, you need to focus it. Yeah. All right. Music videos, they have I don't want to say zero return because we just talked about there's always the 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 other, you know, percentage. But the chances of your music video going viral, eh, very low. The chances of your video going viral without marketing, even lower. Mm -hmm. All right. And we're already talking about being in a position where we're worried about money. So you're probably not gonna have money to create a high quality video and do marketing. Yeah. All right. So cost is going to be a huge thing, let alone the fact that most people that I see still are paying too much for their music videos, in my opinion. All right. Now that's just my opinion, but I think a new artist shouldn't be looking at 5k for a music video. Yeah. All right. Now you can barter and they say, Oh my, my cost is 5k 13k whatever whatever if, if y'all are bartering i mean kind of is what it is you didn't have to come out of pocket and maybe you gave them a service or whatever or or they felt like you have clout so you gave them insight to, or you you could post their music video i mean your music video on their page all those type of things cool but yeah you're you don't have a hundred thousand fans and you're paying a tenth of a hundred thousand dollars don't make sense yeah, yeah right yeah and it lowers uh maximum roi on spend right because i look at it just because of the way these socials are set up most of the artists are promoting their music video through snippets of the music <laughs> through snippets of the music video right yes so it's essentially let's say i pay 5k to make this video that i now chop down into five or six snippets to promote and i get whatever impact out of it i don't know let's just throw no let's say you get ten thousand streams of views out of it versus Let's say you, I don't know, pay someone to make you uh, five or six TikToks around the video or around the song, and that costs you, I don't, I don't know what a videographer would charge for that. Let's, let's just say like, let's say 200 an hour. Let's just, just say yeah. that. It takes you three hours to shoot all those pieces of content. That's $600, right? Yep. And then that same output gets you the same 10,000 streams, 10,000 views. One costs you 5K, you know what I'm saying, to get that. The other costs you $600 to get it, right? So the potential... For like the bang of the ROIs, I think is much higher when focusing on the short form over the 
the long term um, over the music video, music videos are something that like artists for the most part get, right? Yeah. Like everyone doesn't have the most amazing creative vision when it comes to their music videos, but you understand for the most part like where music videos fall within the artist ecosystem. It's, it's social proving, right? You are a popping enough artist or you take this seriously enough that you're producing high end assets on the back end, like all the artists who I watch to take it seriously do. But the name of the game right now is short form content. That's something that most artists don't understand. Yeah. And so it's like, hey, you can you you always know the vehicle for a music video is there. Like there's not gonna be a point in time where like someone they may be less effective, but we're always gonna be accepting of music videos, right? That's never going away. So I always look at it, why not spend the least amount of money to get the same impact while also learning how to figure out something that you don't quite understand, but has a, the chance to have five to 10X the, the return for you than like a one one music video drop might have. You know what I'm saying? See, that right there is something that makes me think of the fact that Chris Brown, we just talked about not dropping his music video till mm. how many years later? Long ass time, like four or five? Four or so? five years yeah. later. Uh, we ha- we just referenced another track where the song, the music video didn't get created till probably like six or seven years later. Yeah. Like Ja'Cory said, like your music video can come. Yeah. Right? Like most people on the industry side, more the executive side, they're pretty savvy and look at music videos as something that we're willing to invest in once the phone- song takes off. Yeah. Because now it makes sense. But why are we putting all this money behind something that we don't even know if it's going to work? So let's hold back. It doesn't mean never. It just means not now. And then never if it doesn't hit. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, okay, you drop this music video, things take off, bam, let's go ahead and, and you know, build more around the world and space of this particular song that's moving. But, like you said as well, people don't quite understand short form content. And I think one thing that's not being taken seriously when it comes to short form content is literally treating it as serious as a music video yeah right yeah. artists are missing that opportunity like crazy by just not being creative i'm baffled at how many times i've had to ask artists to be creative <laughs> it's like this is what you're supposed to do like don't leave that creativity in the doll and then all of a sudden you're just a normal person clark can everywhere else you go yeah. when you're thinking about the video concept you think about your tiktoks you can be that creative you can think about your brand you can think about what you want to present But then, of course, you have to figure out how you cater that to the platforms. And it sounds weird, like, oh, I don't want to have to understand the TikTok algorithm, da 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 da. But generally speaking, even musically, people are adjusting their music for the platforms and the times. Mm -hmm. People make shorter music today because of the times, right? It's still a social algorithm of sorts that you're adjusting to, right? The way you mimic your hooks, to some of the terminology you use, all of that's there. You're always using that. So don't take that mentality. Just think about it as, Okay, there are certain types of things that work on these short form co- um, content platforms. How can I maybe break five mini clips into something that still represents something as a whole, maybe? Right? So maybe they tell a story throughout all of those clips, but they still stand separately. And yeah. if you get this content creator, videographer like that, who is like, hey, how can we think about this specific snippet together and create a 30 second snippet? that makes an impact right communicates the video my vision presents the song in a hard way bam we do that and then how can we do that again it's kind of reminds me about uh duckworth when he did the series promoting his live uh, no his streaming his live streaming show where it was a commercial series and everything built off of each other right yeah you can build off of each um everything in that same way so, I don't know, man. I just want artists to be more creative or I just wish they realize they can be. But there's something intimidating when it comes to the short form, maybe the quantity that it requires, or maybe just the fact that this isn't this artist-specific platform. Like music videos, you think, oh, music artist, right? But you're now looking at what everybody else is doing. So, you leave your artist box and you're like, whoa, I'm a fish out of water from that perspective. But you don't have to do that. You could think. I'm an artist, right? A visual artist, a music artist, and I can project whatever world I'm trying to create through that. Um, so I think I think that would help if more artists kind of took that that mentality towards and had some people on their team that could think of short form content as something that, that we can 
Yeah. You know, we can really build on and and represent our brand with versus just trying to follow a trend to go viral. Yeah, it's like the uh, like the La Russell model um, with with him and his content person. I, I was actually gonna say that, man. It's like you, you go back to the five K music video. It's like one five K music video is three months of a retainer from a good content person. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you can find a content person for fifteen hundred a month, and they really help you get that shit down. And, you know, it's three months of development versus, like, this one video that you still have to figure out how to market. And you still don't have the skill sets to, to push it forward with the content, right? So, I even look at it like that. Because uh, going back to it, the video is always going to be there. You always have the option as an artist to come back at some point in time to make a video. We as music consumers don't really care. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's nice when we get it. <laughs> yeah. But if we're being real about it, like, if you put your consumer hat on, even for other artists, like, how long do you care about that video? Right? Probably yeah. for about as long as you care about a TikTok. Or as you care about an Instagram short or a reel. But the difference is that short, that reel, that TikTok costs you probably, you know what I'm saying, two to a hundred times less than that video costs. You know, depending on your resources and where you kind of are with things. So, yeah, yeah, I agree with that, bro. It's like that, that long-term impact, like, is really so many ways you can make a much longer-term impact for the cost of, like, one music video. Bro, add on top of that, are you even thinking about your favorite artist's music video like that? Maybe your favorite, favorite, favorite who's dropping and they have the full rollout, you know, the top, top tier. Yeah. Most of the music you hear today, you're not thinking, oh, I wonder if this has a music video. Yeah. There was a time and that was how we thought, right? Dope song. I wonder what the video looks like or if they're going to have a video. That's immediately what you're, what you're connecting it to. That's not the connection. What does your mind go when you hear a song that you like? When I hear a song I like, the first thing I do is, well, the first thing I do is I go to their page. Well, well, yeah, well actually, let me double back. Well, someone I just found is I'm like, I so, would say it's two, it's two ways okay. to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who this is. And yeah. then the other way is I know who this is already. And this is my first time hearing that song, the new, a new song from them. So okay. let, let's start with, I don't know who this is. All right. So I don't know who it is. So I, I find them. The first thing I do is I go look at their account and I try to gauge like how long they've been doing this. Like, is this one video I came across like a fluke or they've really been like killing this shit? And I just like scroll through, maybe look at five or six videos. I'll click over to like their Instagram, maybe look at a couple posts. And then from there I go to Spotify and I try to see like how big they are musically and where the song is at. That's typically where I stop unless I see something about a music video on their page and then it kind of splits. If I like the song enough, I go watch the video. If I don't like it enough, I'm just like, oh, I just really like the song. This is cool for now. Let me add it to my library. And maybe a couple of listens later, I'll finally be like, okay, let me go watch the video. You know what I'm saying? Because the are video even, I got it. Are you even automatically looking for the video? Or is no, that if like, you saw that a video existed? Yeah, like if I just am scrolling through the Instagram and I see a clip for it, I'm like, okay, that's cool. I got a video for it. Yeah. I'm probably still not going to watch it right now. You know, like I'm, I'm going to just listen to it a couple of times. Because videos, bro, that's attention span. Like a song, you can just throw it on the background. Video, I got to watch that shit. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like that's, that's two to three minutes of my life I'm giving <laughs> you. And I take that shit seriously. Yeah. Um, so that's typically the process. And then I'll listen to the song a couple of times. Maybe like once or twice, I'll talk to see if I like it as much for real as I thought I liked it from the clip. Because I mean, they don't get talked about enough, but you know, sometimes, brother, snipping on the internet be the best part of the song. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it, it, you'll listen, you'll be like, okay, what the fuck is this? Like, eh, no, nah, I'll just go back to just following bro on TikTok. You know what I'm saying? I'll support from the <laughs> sidelines. So I ain't gonna really stream it a couple of times. Now, if it's somebody I know, now, actually, artists I do know, my first thought is that I have a music video. I usually go look for it there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, if I know you well enough, yeah, I'm like, oh, shit, I wonder if you got a video for this. I go look. Like, oh, I ain't got a video for this? Okay, well, same process. What else have you been doing? What's your Spotify looking like? What's your socials looking like? Why do like? you think you do that if you know them already? I think. And when you say know them, are we talking about, you know, kind of you just know who they are, know them, or you're more of a fan? Kind of know who they are. to feel Like, somewhere in that spectrum. Like, if I... And familiar with you, even if I'm not a fan, I'll still go and watch. Because at that point, I still look at like research purposes. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like I'm still keeping up with what's going on. Um, we're just like just kind of seeing like how one side of you know a certain spectrum may be moving compared to like the side I'm paying attention to. And if it's a fan, like someone I'm a fan of, yeah, I'm, I'll go watch it regardless. Like, if I'm a fan of ours, like I'll pretty much like if I know it exists, I'll go check it out. You know, if I know it exists and it doesn't cost money, I'll go check it out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's the type of fan that I am. And so, but with those people, you ask why, I think it's because, like, the the trust has already kind of been built, mm. right? So, if I'm still a fan of you, then that means that you've consistently given me things I like from you. So, I'm assuming that I'm going to like this thing that I, I see from you. And then, a part of it, too, 
because I catch myself falling for it. But we always talk about how fans are really just people that like feel like y'all would be cool if y'all like met in real life. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, they, they feel like y'all would be BFFs and like y'all would get a drink together and just mm-hmm. be like the best of friends. I do look at a lot of artists I fuck with like that. I can't even lie. Like I'm like, man, like <laughs> Glorilla probably be cool as fuck to hang around, bro. I go yeah. watch this video. I fuck with her, bro. Let me go watch this video so her. She get the extra view, you know what I'm saying? Let me be the bump in the algorithm that get this shit going. So That's funny. a part of that is me taking part in like fan culture and just being like, because I, I like participating in so in artist career as a fan because we're usually the ones behind it. You know what I'm saying? You don't really get to be a fan. You know, you just like, you like, you like, uh, I can't think of her name, like like the Wizard. You like the girl peeking behind the curtains on the Wizard of Oz, bro. Yeah. It's like, ah, I'm tired of looking behind the curtain. I want to be on the, the other side of it for once, you know? I want to be wild in the maze and, Really? Magitize and shit. So, <laughs> so I nice do it just to that. like be able to participate in the fan experience. You know, it's funny you say that because <laughs> I, at one point, had an opportunity in the NBA, like from a work standpoint. Mm. This is after I'm in music, and I literally said, "My music industry <laughs> has." experience has ruined <laughs> my music fandom. <laughs> I don't want to ruin another thing yeah. that I just love for the sake of love. Yeah. You know, like I, you know, I it's not that I don't enjoy music, but it's definitely a completely different world in perception. <laughs> and I so envy sometimes the ignorant consumer. Bro, you know, so much, bro. Like I sometimes I get upset because I'm on the inside of some of the ignorant stuff they say of why certain actually uh, stuff actually happened and da da da. Whatever, but just the ability to enjoy in that pure, ignorant way, yeah. right? And build the narrative and world that you want to, whether it's true or not. Man. Bro, it's beautiful, bro. I, I do miss that. Yeah, bro. <laughs> like, and people ask me a lot of times, like, man, like, how come you guys never reach out to some of your favorite artists that y'all do campaigns? And I'm like, because I want them to just stay my favorite artists. Like, I don't want to, like, I don't want... I don't want to be calling Travis Scott Jaquise. I don't want us to get to that level. You know what I'm saying? Like, like no, bro. I want to stay behind the, the persona and see everything through the lens of what you intended for yeah. us as fans to see. I don't want to be sick of this by the time it comes out because I've been listening to it for the last six months. You right. know what I'm saying? Helping you prep for the now rollout. I can't enjoy the whole rollout yeah. the same at one moment. Yeah. yeah. I actually have an artist homie uh, that did this recently. Like, he used to always send us leaks of new music. And, like, outside of him being my friend, like, I'm a, I'm a big fan of his music. And maybe like a month ago, we were at one of his shows and one of my friends was like, bro, like, you ain't seen me at least in a minute. And he's like, yeah, I was thinking about it, man. Like, I feel like I'd be killing y'all fan experience. And I don't want to do that to y'all. So like, I'm not sending y'all leaks anymore. And like the rest of my friend group was like, man, that's fucked up, bro. What the fuck? Me, I was like, thank you, bro. Because yes, like you really <laughs> have been kind of like killing it for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't get to, en- I don't get to enjoy in the moment like the rest of your fan base does just because I'm your friend, bro, that's fucked up. You know what I'm saying? I want to be, I want to go through the roller coaster like everybody else going through the roller coaster. Yeah. You know? So, so I care about that, bro. Like you said, bro, there's, there's, there's some trauma in your music enjoyment experience that comes from working in the music industry, bro. And I don't want that across the board. So, nope. so when I do come across the artist that I can just really ride the fan roller coaster and just truly be a part of the fan experience, like I would do it. Like I'll take part in it. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like I'm, I'm a, I'm a, um, I'm a receptive fan, bro. I'm that person that at the show, like you tell them to lift their hand up, I'm lifting my hand up. You know what I'm, saying? I'm that I'm that person, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? You got me through the process, I'm right there with you oh, if yeah. I like you enough. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that does affect the way I kind of go. But like a new artist, I think I'm more so looking like for reinforcement that I can trust their decision on whatever they're gonna try to push me to. And the the easiest way to get yeah. that is typically the music, right? Like you make a good song, I trust you a l I, I trust your judgment a little bit more, right? You trust told me you this shit was hard. I went and listened to it. That shit was hard. You just got five trust points from me. You know what I'm saying? You ain't at zero no more. And I trust you a little bit more, right? And then maybe I keep seeing other things from you, and I'm like, okay, you know, it's building up the trust point. And this video was hard. They go two more trust points. And this reel was hard. I go two more trust points. And, like, now over time, as you're telling me to go do things and check out more things, and if you've built up enough trust points, the decision for me to decide whether I'm going to do it is a lot snappier. Like, I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to watch this shit now versus, like, mm. Let me add this to my watch later and like come back in like three days and see how I feel about it, right? The one that gets me to watch it immediately has built up a lot of trust points. The one that it takes me some time, you know, they might have some because I didn't make the decision immediately not to watch it, but they don't have enough to make me go check it out in the moment. You know what I'm saying? Like, and there are just some artists who you've watched for so long and have seen build so much, like their trust fund with you is like crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, think about someone like a J. Cole or a Kendrick, but he's he's had 10 years to build up his trust fund with me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So like at this point, it's like, I've seen enough from you over 10 years that I, I trust whatever you're telling me to go check out versus this 
little who the fuck ever that I just learned about yesterday, bro, you got five points. It's gonna take a lot for you to just make me jump at shit <laughs> immediately, you know, because you ain't you ain't got there yet. It's just yep. the reality of it. No, bro, that's exactly how it works. I have plenty of things outside of music that have worked like that where I have people who did not trust what I told them to do mm. and <laughs> they were like, dang, man, I should have listened to you mm. or dang, I should have listened to you sooner. And then that kind of thing happened again and again and again and again. And now they're like, yeah, man, man, you know what? Whenever you tell me, I get right to it. I'm like, I'm surprised you did so fast. It's like, yeah, man, I learned my lesson over time. Yeah. When you tell me about X, Y, Z, just go ahead and get on it. And that has nothing to do with music, but that's literally what's happening with everybody that you build trust from, yeah. right? Yeah. Like you can, the more trust you have, the less time it takes for them to act on whatever you're trying to, you know, direct them to do next. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's is is underrated. Like the building the trust factor part is completely underrated because I think artists tend to think of the process of becoming a fan is like super linear, right? Like you heard the song, you liked it. Like why are you not a fan? You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah, and it's like that's not enough. It's like because the fan relationship is about how much I trust one, just your music opinion and taste, right? Like your style, mm-hmm. and then it becomes about how much do I trust your lifestyle, and then how much do I trust you as a person, right? And, like, if you're able to kind of clear fan expectations at each level, like, you have a you have a more than likely a, a very successful, like, long-term career, yep. right? And then if you're not able to clear fan expectations in certain levels, like, that might be sometimes what's holding you back in certain areas. might be why you're, like, hitting certain ceilings, right? Because maybe I completely trust you and your music output. Like, you make amazing music, but then every brand deal you've ever done has been trash, you know what I'm saying? So I don't mm-hmm. trust you completely when you're telling me to go buy certain products. Yep. Because you you suck over here. Or maybe like your content has been amazing. Because I've seen some artists like that, but I've, met, I've seen some artists that make amazing content and then you get to the catalog and it's not that great. So it's like, I trust your judgment over here, bro. You're amazing at this, but this thing over here ain't, ain't one of my trust it's yet. So, so it's typically like that, right? Like you're building up trust factors with your audience on like each of these kind of different categories. Like your music, your creativity, and then I guess your affinity to certain products as you get more into like you know flipping your brand for like for monetary purposes and thing and like it's just underrated like how much like trust is a big thing like all that shit the more you say that the more i think about how the fan relationship relates to dating and marriage yeah 100 percent. like it's literally over time i like you for one thing you might have brought me in for your looks right Mm -hmm. now it's about the conversation and the part that they never want to talk about when it comes to especially marriage is that day-to-day work. Oh, yeah. And you think, man, <laughs> I gave you all of this. How come you can't give me the benefit on benefit of that on this? Yeah. Or this. Like, why are we arguing about this now? This little thing is so small, but we've done all of this other stuff. And I'm showing you the love. All those things are in place. Why are we arguing about this small thing? That's how fans are. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I just fell in love with you in terms of this song. Man, now you got two, three songs. You know what? For the people who really kill it, they might have a whole album, and it's a moment. Yeah. But is that next album going to hit, though? Is that next album going to hit, though? Right? It's like, dang, bro, y'all, I, I gave you one of your favorite songs. This is legit one of your favorite songs. Why are you- Should change your life. You should just be streaming <laughs> this next thing off the strength. Yeah. Why, are, why do I still have to market to you for you to listen to my next song? Right, yeah. that's how I might feel as an artist because that's how it feels in a relationship where you're like, yeah. dang, why I still have to convince you and, and, and wine and dine you? Why we still need date nights? Like, why do these things still have to happen? Look, I don't got the answer for all this <laughs> shit, <laughs> but it, it, it's something about human nature, bro. You can't stop the work, continues. <laughs> you got to keep putting that work in. And I think so many artists think of making it right as the point where you get to stop. You know where some people might think of marriage as a point that you get to stop, <laughs> bro. That shit don't stop, bro. Just take it from me. None of that shit stops. It's a never ending grind. <laughs> never ending grind. You know what I mean? The only thing that changes is the way that you look at it, your perspective <laughs> on it. You know, what I mean? <laughs> so you can change your perspective in a positive direction and say, you know, I'm investing. You know, instead of I'm grinding. You know what I mean? I'm building. You can use all those positive type of terms. But, you know. <laughs> At the end of the day, you're just working. The work is the work. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. So, you know, artists get used to that. And that's why it's, that's why we speak so much on building systems and understanding the game. Because how many times have we heard people say, oh, man, I got a label. But the label didn't really do anything. Or I expected things to just take off. But they're still 
where they are, mm -hmm. or I still had to work so hard for certain things to happen. These are all things that you're adding to your machine. Just look at yourself as you having a machine. You have to have the machine. And the people on your team add to the machine and have a function to it. The deals and partnerships, they're all adding to that machine, but the machine is still the heart of it. You are the engine, whatever that looks like for you. And the further things get away from the heart of that engine, the less... I don't want to say less impact they have because they might have some great impact because it could be a big investment that comes from the outside. But the less responsibility they have at the end of the day, right? You can say whatever the agreement said, but hey, if this is, if I got a business and you're employee number 100, no matter what that agreement was for employee number 100, you know what I mean? That's nothing like the person who's right up under Mm -hmm. me or whatever you know what i mean or my own personal shit responsibility and, and leadership or whatever right mm -hmm. that's that's the way it goes so let's get back to actually some of the stuff that the people said in the group because i think there were a lot of dope personal experiences from the artists and um shoot managers in this community for example adrian milanio said traditional music videos aren't needed as much as they were 15 to 20 years ago or moving into short form content. I think they're important in the sense of looking legitimate, mm -hmm. but out of all the things artists should be focusing on, I think quantity of content that resonates with people is going to lean towards being more important than a flashy music video. My favorite part of what he said is sense of looking legitimate. Yeah. And you kind of alluded to that yeah. yourself, right? Yeah. It's just like, hey, I take this thing seriously. And people are trying to gauge, do you take yourself seriously? Are you just another influencer, right? Yeah. Right? Or one of these random people who just decide, I want to make one video. Or are you truly an artist? Because once you can tell somebody's truly an artist, now I might think about, oh, are they on Spotify? Mm -hmm. Or are they, in, are, are they in these other places? Do they have tours? And that's something that's always been important, right? Having a certain level of seriousness in terms of your appearance appearance as an artist but i think that's more important today than ever when you have so many people who are doing music but are not necessarily that serious yeah taking it serious yep. yeah yeah um this other one says let me see jermaine gum said i think today's audience likes music videos but not as much as they did years be before adrian milani is correct today's videos is short form yep so agreeing right there you don't see too much ahead but i i think it's interesting when he, that jermaine used the word like right do you think people <laughs> like music videos less now? No, I mean I don't think they like them less. I think I think the attention span for them is a lot shorter because of how much video content we're being served. You know, it's like at this point, every social media platform is video focused. Yeah. You know? So like your whole day is you watching mini movies, mini music videos, you know what I'm saying? short snippets of longer interviews, but you're literally consuming video content. Like, yeah. For as, as long as you decide to be on the internet. And yep. then the music video is just another piece of video content. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, bro, I've been watching, I've been on Instagram <laughs> since 10 o'clock. It's 12. That's two hours of video content. I just saw your new music video release post 30 seconds ago, bro. I'm burned out. Like, I don't feel like, why? I was about to go hop off and like go outside or something. You know what I'm saying? Go get some hey, fresh air. Like, bro. Oh, I just left work <laughs> yeah. and we got some new skills that we need to gain. So they sent us some video tutorials. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I just sent somebody a video clip explaining or asking them a question. They sent a question back. We just got off a Zoom call. It's all video. Life is video. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I definitely agree with that. We get a lot more burnt out on that today. And Johnny Rayborn, by the way, you know, these these comments again this is brand man network it's our free community brandmannetwork.com check it out however everybody can get in uh, we want to make sure we keep this quality and you know if you want to hop in make sure you hop in sooner than later because we don't know how long we'll be taking people for free at least johnny rayborn said short form content fuels long form content yep. that is a fact like you already kind of you just said it jacory you want to yeah. Want to say something before I finish? Nah, man. I'll say, say finish before I can. He's basically about to hit a spot on. All right. In the new formula, more people will see your shorts as an intro before they ever see your long form. But once they like your short term, they will swing over to your long form. Yeah, that's why I want to take away from my, my boy Johnny. Because that, that's pretty much it, bro. Like yes, we sir. We said before, because we first started noticing it with TikTok, mm -hmm. where... 
the example I give the people is think about your the average music video is probably what like three to five minutes long. Yeah. And so in that amount of time, someone could have watched five to let's say twenty TikToks shorts reels from you, depending on how long they are. Let's say five to twenty somewhere in there. Yeah. So that means in the same amount of time as it takes me to watch one video, I could have went through multiple videos of you, had the trust factor built up a little bit faster. Um and I now want to watch longer form content from you because I was able to get into the, get that trust from you so quickly. And like we like I said, we see it with TikTok. Like one of the, the biggest places that people convert to from TikTok is YouTube, right? So they're literally like it's, it's literally you are training your audience to fall in love with you through 10 second snippets, 20 second snippets. They're naturally gonna be like, damn, like do you make longer form content? Like, can I see some some other stuff from you? And so there is a human element to it where I think, you know, that um we're kind of programmed that way. But then, like he touched on, the algorithms are moving towards that. Like we 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 read off uh, Leo Cohen's plans for YouTube a couple episodes ago. Yep. And in that report, he literally said his his goal is to make shorts be a vehicle to push people over to the long form content. He wants to have that line built clearly between audience short form to long form. So we know that the platforms are getting ready to focus on that, or at least YouTube is getting ready to focus on that. Which means at some point, the rest of them will also start to focus on that. So that says a lot about what you as an artist, how you as an artist should be thinking about your short form to long form content pipeline. You know, like even going back to like, we're not saying never do a video. We're not saying, you know, it's impossible for them to work. We're just saying that their structure in, in your in, in your system as an artist is much different than it, than it would have looked like 10, 20, shit, even like five years ago. You know what I'm saying? Like to be real. But yeah, it's like if I, I'm looking at your TikTok and if I don't like these five, 30 second videos that you put up, I'm going to assume I'm not going to like your music video, right? It's like, here was a exactly. chance for you, like going back to what you said, here was a chance for you to show me your creativity and why I should listen to you and things like that in a very short, digestible manner for me. You know what I'm saying? This is this is, this is is a very low risk way for me to decide if I like you or not versus me going to watch a five minute video from you. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And so it's like, if you can win me over here, I'm naturally going to assume that I'm going to like everything else that I see, whether I'm, I'm, I'm wrong or not, right? Like, or I'm right or not. But I'm naturally going to assume that. And I think that's how most people look at it coming from short form. Hey, man, I've binged 10 of your TikToks in, in a minute and a half, and I liked eight of them. Yeah, I go watch a video. Like, I'm, I'm assuming I'm going to like what I, what I see over there. Versus, like, you have nothing for me to gauge it off of, and you just want me to assume that shit on the other side is nice? That's wow, right. I don't know you to trust you enough like that, right? Like, to, mm-hmm. to assume that. So, no, I'm not going to. So, yeah. That's right. But it's literally just the vehicle. Yeah, your, your fans... Are well, no, not even your fans, potential fans, the yeah. consumer. They're those people that are like, Yo, you got to come to me. Yeah. All right. You want to have a relationship? I'm not going to ever holler at you. I'm never going to be the one that walks up to you in the club. You're going to have to walk up to me <laughs> no matter what. I could think you look the best in the world, but you got to walk up to me, convince me. And, and like you said, right, going back to the creativity point, this is your moment, right? Mm-hmm. You got a split second, right? How do you look? How do you smell? How are you? Like projecting yourself, what kind of talk game do you have? <laughs> and all right, bet let's have a longer conversation. Where I'm gonna go look at everything else. People were doing this mm-hmm. already themselves. We already do this anyway. The thing is, it's just broken down, right? A lot of the stuff that's happening on the internet today is not as different as we make it seem. It's just that now we have a way to technologically separated into the boxes that we naturally do in our thought process. Mm -hmm. All right. So now, oh, okay. Short form. That's the teaser long form. All right. That's the full blown thing. And then the sales process, like all that's there and everything segmented. So we're thinking about things in these very specific segments. We're thinking about niches versus just trying to go big and hit everybody and make the world hear us because it's accessible to make each of these things a profession <laughs> yeah. to uh, is, is that accessible um, or a legitimate route to build. And um, Eddie Hart, he dropped something. And I think this is a great way to round this whole conversation out. He said, I think taking a phased approach is the way to go. I agree that building an engaged fan base that's ready to consume a full length music video is better ROI than using that music video to build that fan base, right? So I'm going to deliver it to you when they're ready, not use it to build the fan base, all right? 
That being said, you can leverage a music video by chopping it up into pieces of micro content with a text overlay laying out the day of the shoot or something to deepen the song's narrative with a call to action to watch the whole thing. <sighs> I'm starting to resent something about this. Oh. Could actually do a ton for driving views to the music video itself. Some food for thought. All right. I like some of that food. I'm not eating the whole plate, though. <laughs> what we just talked about, being creative in your short form content hmm. is the antithesis of just taking my music video and chopping it up into pieces. Hmm. And we know that we do it. We know that many other people do it. And hmm. we know that it works, right? Yeah. But until somebody starts to think beyond that and just say bump music video and just chopping it up into pieces and says no i'm going to just create short form content and keep it like that in these snippets we're not going to see people truly see as many gains as they can from this yeah right we always talk about doing something contextual to the platform but you also have to be contextual to the format so if you take that time to think hey i want to make it specifically for this format whatever that looks like that's going to be better. You can chop up your music video, but it's not going to be as great at the end of the day as saying, hey, what does this look like for this 30 seconds, this 15 seconds? What does it mean? I can think about my call to action. Now, with that being said, there's a, another hack, so to speak, that I think more people could take advantage of. You can shoot your music video in a way that's aware of the moments that make the most pop, all right? If I shoot my music video in the way that takes into account the fact that, yo, this is a really dope moment, so I need to shoot it in a way that's gonna be cut for social media, but also works in the context of the whole music video, then now taking snippets isn't that bad or diluting things mm. because what happens is reverse engineering in a very organic way. You are basically saying, how can I make the best product possible? And we know the best products are always the most marketable at the end of the day. From an organic standpoint, the product itself is the marketing itself. So if I say, oh, I'm creating this really dope concept, but now I'm not just shooting it in this typical way. I need to make sure this person's closer to the screen or all these things are in the shot at the same time. Because if I do it vertical, then, you know, it's going to look off. It's going to look off. Yeah. Right. You take all those things to an account at once, then you're going to save yourself a hell of a lot of money, actually, which we don't talk about enough. Uh, but also, you're going to give yourself a marketing asset that's going to go a lot farther for less money. But really quickly on that a lot less money thing, spending more time up front saves money, point blank. Yeah. And I think one thing that people rob themselves of is trying to create certain things so quickly in terms of their content that they don't spend time on the front end saying, how can I be super creative on the front end? So there's really dope moments in here. So it just pops because it's a great music video versus I shot a music video. Now, how can the marketer that I hire get really creative with this piece of content to figure out how do I make it something worth commenting on? But you can do that by making it something worth commenting on up front. You can plan out your shoot so it doesn't take five, six hours, right? Mm -hmm. Like all those things that you do ahead of time, spending more time on the front end when it's cheap and you don't have to pay for the team, the the, the, the videographer and whoever else needs to be, the spot that you're you're paying for, spending that time up front, laying out all the shots, right? Understanding what's going to pop, where you're going to get the most out of it, doing that up front is going to save you so much money, all right? And I don't think we promote the actual craft side of it enough. Because, you know, I mean, one, that's not, people don't ask us enough, right? They don't, <laughs> they don't know what we be doing on that side of things yeah. or how we think about that side of things. But that is the X factor a lot of times when you look at these teams that are really killing it. It's those little details as well. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And, and even to Eddie's point, bro, like Eddie, bro, that's like three pieces of content max in your rollout. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, one good snippet with the headline CTA. A little making of video, maybe one blank one, you know what I'm saying? So you can get that. And that's it, bro. That's that's three pieces of content out your your whole rollout. So yeah. yeah, I agree, man. I agree with everything you just said. Well, 
with that being said, we got a, a deep dive we want to get into. 